the jury is still out uh, because on the one hand, uh, it certainly has inhibited uh, things. Uh, a year ago, sustainability was the hot topic. All companies were embracing it. If you look at the marketing campaigns of companies as different as Herman Miller and Walmart, it was all surrounding. Even Walmart, everyday low prices, was uh, focused on uh, sustainability. And yet, during a financial crisis, uh, a business downturn, especially one as, uh, as uh, severe as the one we're going through, the first thing that many companies seek to cut are what they see as extra programs. On the other hand, as I said before, companies that saw sustainability not as a fad or as a burden, but actually as an opportunity for their business, there we did not see the cutbacks. If anything, we saw that they redoubled their efforts because they realized that what was good for the bottom line, cutting out waste, reducing energy consumption, material consumption, water consumption, uh, turnover of people, etc., was also good for the planet. Absolutely. Um, I don't think uh, the private sector can do this alone. Um, the private sector has to do what's in its sphere, thinking about its own operations, revisiting its supply chain, rethinking business models, new products and services, etc. But uh, this problem, sustainability, is a systemic problem. It can't be solved one company at a time or one factory at a time. And that's where policy uh, comes in. And I think that some of the opportunities that are being discussed in this country, as well as the United States, around cap-and-trade programs or diffusion of best practices across different firms uh, or even across different industries, that's essential. And so, so that we don't have a market failure on such a critical issue, I think we absolutely need to have public-private partnerships. That's a great question. Um, the problem until a year ago for labor standards was primarily uh, excess overtime and poor wages. Certainly there were some other issues in terms of poor working conditions, child labor, et cetera, but at least in the research that I did, the two major issues were excess overtime and poor wages and some of the health consequences as a result of that. Things have dramatically changed, especially in most of the commodity good uh, sectors. Now the problem is an excess over time, but actually not enough work. And so what we start seeing is actually people are being laid off, uh, or what we see is even if we saw some movement in terms of improving labor standards, now some of those companies just to stay in business are sort of shaving costs. And where they're shaving is, of course, on labor costs, not paying a fair wage or overworking people, uh, et cetera. So once again, we see that uh, the problem of labor standards is a big issue, even if what's driving it seems to be a very different uh, set of pressures. The race to the bottom will only get you so far, and in a world where there's lots of countries with excess labor, um, even China seems to realize that uh, it has to adopt standards. So if we think about the contract labor laws uh, and uh, some of the environmental protections that even in China were introduced in the last year, and we do see some evidence that it's being implemented. It's not just on the books, but there seems to be implementation. And I think that's because they realize that if they were just going to compete on cost, there's always Vietnam or Indonesia or Cambodia and later on maybe some African nations that can always sort of outcompete them just on costs. The way that they're going to compete is on lower unit costs, not total labor costs, and on um, efficiencies and quality.